Hello, it's Catherine Norland. Good morning. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in a long time. Was I here last week? I'm not even sure. I have been traveling so much. Um, the last three weeks is kind of it's kind of been a blur. I'm glad I took notes at the events I've been at because I think it started in Legoland three weeks ago for Eli's birthday, but then I stayed for a three-day retreat. And then I think I was home a day or two from that retreat. Hey, Nicola. And then I went to Florida for a conference. I think I was in Florida four days or maybe five days for a conference, which was mind blowing. And then maybe I was home a day or two, like home just enough to give the kids squeezes and do my laundry. <laughs> and then I went to uh, Las Vegas for a mastermind. With Nan is here. Good morning. And then this morning I got in. I mean, I got home after midnight this morning and then got up about 3.45 this morning to take my husband to the airport. Where was I? I was speaking in Atlanta. So I got in to my house a little after midnight. Then 3.45 this morning, got up, took my husband to the airport. So... I've got my throat coat tea because my throat's a little, you know, that whole, you don't get sleep when you're traveling. Kind of. So, oh, Christina wants to ask me something. You guys, when you're on these lives, it is, it's basically a Q and A. Sometimes I teach you stuff, but I'm here to answer your questions. So I kind of wanted to do things a little different today. And that was, um, I didn't necessarily have a subject to talk to you about. I label today's session, what's your problem? Because I literally want to know, what is your problem? What are you dealing with? What are you struggling with? How can I help you? If this were like, if you were, if I were coaching you, I want to like help you through something that you may be going through. So um, Derek, I don't know. I don't know. My schedule's been crazy. I'm not sure when or if I'll be able to visit. I'm just barely, I'm not even coming up for water yet. So I'm home finally as of this morning, but tomorrow I go right to work and I'm working nearly every day this week. Uh, and Rob and Eli left this morning for Rob's grandpa's funeral. Okay. Let's see what you got. Oh, Orly's here. I did not expect you to be on this morning. Um, and Christine is asking, can I meet you guys, the whole crew from Darman in Switzerland? Are you going to fly us all there? Because I don't think we have any plans to go to Switzerland. <laughs> hey, Jacqueline. Good morning. So what has been some questions that you've been wanting to ask me? What has been something that you're struggling with that you maybe need help with that you want some answers to. Nicholas saying, how is Atlanta? Sorry, I didn't go to the workshop. It was great. It was really great. I was, I was a little bit nervous because it was my first time speaking on this particular topic. And I think anytime you're speaking on a new topic, it's a little like, oh, am I going to remember? Is this going to resonate with people? Is this going to hit people in the right way? But I think, you know, one of my friends showed up. You guys know Monica. She was, uh, we interviewed her on one of these live streams and she talked about confidence. So she convinced me not to use my cue cards. I was really like, I don't know. I don't have this memorized. I need my cue cards. And she was like, no, you don't. You don't need to use them. And I didn't. And I think I forgot a couple little minor things. But like when you do a speech like that, nobody knows what your speech is about. And nobody knows what you're going to say. And also when you don't follow the script to the T, you're able to kind of just flow with your intuition, flow with the Holy Spirit working through you. And so there were maybe three or four things that I added into the speech that were not something I had thought of in advance or practiced, but they might have been exactly what somebody needed to hear to get their breakthrough. So that's the good thing about it. Jasmine says, I'm getting a new sister and I'm scared. It's going to be really different. New 
new is sometimes scary. It's only because we don't know what, what it holds. You know, that's the reason people stay in bad relationships, abusive relationships, bad jobs. There's this saying that's called, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know, which means like, okay, if I'm in this abusive marriage, I know if he goes home and has a certain, if he has a drink before he comes home or he's gone to the bar, he's going to come home angry. I know I have to have his hot food on the table. I know if I don't, if I know if I act a certain way, you know, you have all these things that even though he's awful, he's abusing you, he's a devil, you, you kind of know what to expect. Branch is in a not a healthy relationship where the guy is very narcissistic and but she's kind of scared to leave and make it on her own because he's the primary breadwinner. So sometimes we put up with things in life because we don't have the confidence in ourselves that we're going to be able to handle it. Um, does that resonate with any of you? Do you feel like you're staying in situations that aren't good or aren't healthy for you because you're not sure what will happen if you if you leave, you're not sure if you can make it on your own. Okay. Um, oh, thanks for the hearts, Mona. Mikey and Jay episodes are great. Yeah, I just saw the first one. I got to catch up because I've been traveling the last three weeks. I've not been able to catch up and watch them. I just, last one I just watched was the bride one where the bride gets drunk at her bachelorette party. That was... Wow. <laughs> Nicholas says, can you talk about dealing with people who are trying to break your friendships? I've been through that. I've definitely been through that. You know, when people try to break friendships, first of all, they can't really break a true friendship because if someone loves you and cares about you and they believe in you, they're not going to believe the trash talk that other people are saying. And if they do, I don't know if they were really true friends. If they believe, if they don't, like, it's one thing if, if someone comes to you and says, like, they were trash talking you and they say, Nicola, did you really say that about me? And you can say, no, I did not say that. I don't know why they would say that. You know, there's a lot of people that come to break things up, and that's just totally how the devil works, right? It says in the book of John, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So that's friendships, that's marriages, that's businesses, that's anything good. And But it says God comes to give you life. God comes to give you life and life more abundantly. So you have to realize when people are trying to break you up, that's that's not from God. That's from the devil. And oh, you do left I have to say, can I please do money? No, I'm busy right now. Sorry, I was about to. Do you want to say hi? Oh yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. I just woke up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was too late. Why don't you go get a drink? Of Timmy's declaring it, mommy, and Sunday. That'll be good. So it's it's stressful. It can be stressful. It can be hurtful. I've had people try to break up my friendships, try to say lies. It's it's one of those storms you have to just go through in life. And it's almost like nothing I say can really even help you through that except going through it. Like you can describe to someone all you want, do this, do that, do that. But until you've been through it, you don't know. What I will say, though, is to check your emotional intelligence to make sure you're not getting out of sorts, upset, overwhelmed, that you're not freaking out. Because when you start to freak out, it turns off the parts of your brain that are meant for problem solving. So the moment we start freaking out and thinking, this is the end, this is the worst, oh my God, my life is over, this is never going to, they're never going to be my friend, they're going to believe that person, and you start freaking out. It's just going to send you in a downward spiral of anxiety and depression and, and all this stuff. Excuse me, little one. What are you doing? Excuse me. Excuse me. This new dog 
likes to chew off all my papers, and I need these receipts for tax purposes. So um, I always got to catch him. You never know what he's going to be. Excuse me. What are you doing? Okay. Yes, you can play. You can play with the ball. I thought he was peeing on my couch, on my blanket. But okay, he's not. I just have not got used to this dog yet. Was it been two weeks or three weeks that we've had him? <laughs> okay, so keep your emotions in check. Take some deep breaths. Um, if you guys have, uh, if you guys use essential oils, I mean, I got my stress away oil here. I got my gratitude oil. Um, get forgiveness oil. I'm putting them on. I'm smelling them. I'm like doing breathing exercises, calming down. Don't let it get you out of sorts. You know, the devil comes to divide the brethren, right? That's what it says in the Old Testament. He he comes to divide us. So we can't, you know, we we can't let it get us out of sorts. My true friends know if somebody says something about me to them or says that I said something about them, number one, they know not to believe it. If that person that's trying to break us up is really going after, really trying to make it happen, and they're saying all kinds of things that maybe are making my friend question, they will come to me and they will ask me. They won't just assume that I did whatever that person is saying. So hopefully your friends are the kind that don't just believe what anybody is saying. Okay, let me know if that was helpful. Christina says, sometimes I feel like, why is the world not free? What do you mean by that? Free in what way? Can you be more specific? Um, okay, Ryan says, I swear people will get mad at me for something I can't control. When I play with them, they start swearing at me and getting mad at me. They make fun of me and I don't know what to do. Um, Ryan, what do you mean by um, when you play with them? What does that mean? Does that mean you're joking around and kidding? You're just trying to like have some banter or like some, you know, people banter back and forth like, you're not going to win. I'm going to win this contest. I'm going to win this video game. You're not going to do it. Is that the kind of play you're talking about or what kind you're talking about? What is it that you're that you're doing or people may think that you're doing that makes them want to make fun of you? And it may not be something you're doing. Listen, I'm not trying to accuse you. But sometimes we're doing something and we think it's an innocent little game of play. But what happens is it may feed on one of their triggers. It may trigger them like... Uh, get them to show what shows where their wounds are. Okay, when you say or do something that triggers an area in someone, it shows what their wounds are. It shows areas of their life that they have not healed yet. There were certain things that people used to joke around or kid around about. Um, if you guys, hold on, I'm going to show you something. No, no, no. So I don't know if you've seen this book, Poetic Prescriptions for Eternal Youth. I used to get so upset when people would make fun of me. I don't anymore. But I just could not handle people making fun of me. And so I wrote this poem called Butt of the Jokes. Like you don't want to be the butt of the jokes. You don't want to be the person that people are making fun of or, or they're they're like pointing you out Then you're succeeding, then you're winning. So I wrote, I don't know what is wrong with me. Oh Lord, I wish I knew. I always do the opposite of what's deemed right to do. When given opportunities, I stay stuck here in fear of others and how they'll react and insults I might hear, right? I was stuck. I couldn't move. I was afraid of how others react. Do, but I allow what others think to stick to me like glue. Do you guys experience that? Someone says something to you that bothers you, that upsets you, and it just sticks onto you. It clings onto you. and You, you can't pull it off you. 
You allow their words to take up residency in your mind, to make you think that what they're saying is the truth. They may just be listening to the devil. They may just be out to hurt you. Maybe they're poking fun. Maybe they're just playing with you. But it's revealing a trigger that you have of a wound that you have not yet healed. So you got to heal that wound inside you, and then it won't bother you anymore. So they, they say these things to you, and they stick to you, right? They're syrup. They're like syrup, but they don't taste sweet. Their syrupy words do not taste sweet. In tacky mess I stay. Wish I could block the negative from what these people say. How many of you, raise your hand, say yes in the comment. If you've ever wished, you would just shut off all the negative comments. If you wish people would only speak what's positive about you. I've been there, but we can't do that. So you have to stop yourself. That's the next step in this poem. You have to stop yourself. When people say that, and I let it stick to my heart like glue, before I let it travel around, I want to knock it to the ground to block my ears ahead of time to anything that's not sublime. But even those whom I hold dear say tough things I don't want to hear. Lock up their lips and make them stop. A wordsmith cop should guard my block. Like, I wanted to block it. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to take it in. I was so fragile. So if you're letting things that other people say about you that are negative, you're letting it get in and it's hurting you, then you have to check how you feel about yourself. When you become confident in who you are and who, who you are in God, then nothing anybody says to you can bother you. So here's a great example yesterday. So yesterday I finally opened my social media because I have been at these conferences and I just really haven't been on it. So I had some troll, some hater come on my Instagram and they commented on at least four or five of my posts. You suck. You're so ugly. Well, that was one of them. You should get plastic surgery. That, that, was, that was another one. Um, what was another one they were saying on one of my posts? You're a terrible actor. You should take acting classes. And I don't, they just had all these insults. Now, in the past, that would have bothered me, but I just played with them back. I was, they were like, you should really take acting classes. You suck. I was like, thanks so much for the tip. I'll look into that. <laughs> I don't remember what I was all saying, but I was just playing right back with them. And they didn't know what to say. They had no comment coming back after that. All four of their comments, I was like, Wow, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts. <laughs> I think they wanted me to react. Sometimes people will say negative things to you just to get you to react, just to get you upset, just to get some emotion out of you. But if you don't, if you ignore it, or if you play back with them like, oh yeah, you're right, maybe I should take a class. <laughs> they're, they're shocked. They're, they can't believe that you're not mad about it. So that might be something fun to try. I remember sharing this with one of my clients once. I used to get really hurt and offended by what people would say about me. And like sometimes I would have to go to an audition dressed like in really skimpy clothes because I would be playing a certain character. And I would be like so self-conscious, like, oh, my God, I don't want anyone to see me when I'm walking to my car to this audition. I don't want them to think bad thoughts about me. I, You know, whatever. And if people called me a name that was not even true, not even true. Like people would be like, you're so slutty. You look like such a slut. I would be so angry and hurt and mad and crying, frustrated. I'd be like, but I'm just, I'm just trying to, I go to this audition and I'm playing this role and I have to look like, yeah, I'd be all upset and trying to prove that I'm not. And it's like, I know that's not me. I've been married to my husband for over 20 years. What, what are you even talking about? Faithful, faithful to my husband <laughs> since day one. But then I got this revelation that it was a wound in me. It wasn't about them. It wasn't about what they were saying. So when I got that revelation of my self-worth, of who I was in God, the things they were saying didn't bother me anymore. I would then have someone come up to me and be like, look at you. What are you, a prostitute? I'd be like, yeah, I am. I'm on the corner every night and your daddy's my best customer. <laughs> I'd just shoot that back at them. Like, it didn't hurt me anymore. I was like, you want to play? I'll play right back. And then they'd be like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> they didn't know what to say. I was kidding, of course, but 
I just think they were kidding too. I don't know. They were trying to get me mad, but I, you know, that it doesn't work anymore. So these trolls, these haters, you're going to deal with them. We all deal with them. They're going to say stuff. Oh, you're fat. You're ugly. I think I told you about the one gal that was like, you better put that forehead away or someone's going to land a plane on it. She was making fun of how big my forehead was. And I used to be insecure about that. I used to be insecure about my forehead, but I'm not anymore. I thought it was funny. I was like, yeah, I think she took a picture of me and she um, put a gif on it with a plane landing or something. It was pretty funny, but that would have bothered me years ago when I couldn't be the butt of the jokes. So I was writing, they poke and prod, make fun of me. I feel it's done deliberately. It stinks to be the butt of jokes. My redness is from all their pokes. And then they're like, where is your humor? We just kid, don't swallow it. It's to be quid. That means, let me spit it out. When someone says something negative to you, don't take it in, spit it out. Don't, don't absorb it. Don't go, oh, they're right. What if I am that way? What if that's true? It's not true. Whatever they're saying about you, it's not true. They're just trying to get a rise out of you. You know if something's true or not because hopefully you're aware of yourself and who you are and hopefully you're listening to God and what he says about you and that's what you need to believe, not what they say. And so here's me still like, don't get me wrong, I love some puns, not aimed at me, I guide. I promise that a knock-knock joke would surely split my side. Oh God, help me so I can see it's not me they attack, that when they call me out in jest, did I lose you guys? Timmy, did you do something? Somehow I got knocked off my live stream. Am I still on? Am I still here? How do I keep this going? Am I still on? I am still here? Okay. I'm like, what? Something is trying to block me. I know. I know something's trying to block me. It knocked me off. A phone call came through. I don't know how a phone call came off my computer, but you guys can see me. Okay, you're saying you can still, I don't see, I don't see it anymore. It's like gone. It, YouTube wasn't even up on my computer anymore. It like completely knocked me off YouTube, but you're saying I'm still here. So I'll keep going. I can't see myself anymore like I normally see myself, but I can see your comments. What the heck happened? S somebody tried to call me on the computer. That's never happened to me before. Oops. Oh my gosh. Whoa. So what's up? Can I help me steal? No, I'm, I'm not right now. No. You know, you know that. Honey. I know, I know, I know. You go, go, go. It will be really quick. No. Timothy? It will be really quick. Timmy? Please don't Come ask on. again. Oh. Please don't ask again. Yes. Okay. So here I am writing this poem and I'm praying to God, don't let others laugh at me. Don't let others make fun of me. I can't handle it. I can't take it. It's so hurtful. But here's the thing, guys. It's only hurtful if you believe it's hurtful. It's only hurtful if you allow it to be hurtful, right? If you allow it to be hurtful, then it's hurtful. But otherwise, it doesn't have to be hurtful. So I was saying, so help me laugh and not feel hurt no matter what they seem to blurt. That when they come at me with a slam, don't let me question who I am. Are you feeling so bad about others making fun of you because it's making you question who you are? Do you not know who you are? Do you not know whose you are? Right? Mona says, haters will always hate. Reverse psychology always stumps the trolls. <laughs> yes, I guess it worked. I guess it worked. And so I realized by the end, I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to, some random internet troll or some jerk. Perhaps I must change how I see that it's not them. It could be me. 
for they are not who I truly duel. It's to myself I have been cruel. I would venture to bet for each and every one of you that is constantly feeling hurt by other people's comments, that you're getting upset and they're saying things that's making you emotional, I would venture to guess that you say hurtful things to yourself, that you are saying things to yourself that are hurtful, that you are judging yourself harshly. And that's why when they judge you harshly, when they say mean things harshly, that it's kind of just a mirror reflection because that's what you've been doing to yourself. And you can't expect others to treat you with kindness and love and respect unless you start treating yourself with kindness, love, and respect. If laughter is a medicine, please fill up my prescription and send me each Laugh at Yourself magazine subscription. That's what I had to do. I had to like be like, I need to be able to laugh at myself. I need to be able to take whatever anyone says and be like, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, you could land a plane on my forehead. That is hysterical. I'm going to use that sometime. <laughs> I'm going to use that sometime. Oh, I suck as an actor. I'm terrible. I need to take classes. Well, you're probably right. I haven't taken a class in a couple of years since my acting coach died. Then maybe they're right. Maybe I do need to brush up on it. You know, we can forget things if we're out of practice. <laughs> but, you know, I have been in 150 films, not counting Dar Man. So, you know, I'm, I can be pretty confident in what I do. So here's the thing. You don't let it shake you. You don't let it rock you. You don't let it get you off guard. You don't let it mean something about you. And you start being kind to yourself. You start giving yourself the love that maybe you're not getting from others. And the last stanza in this poem is, if you're sensitive to others' jokes, there's something underneath they poke. Until that's fixed, you'll never be at peace or able to be free. I'm going to read that again. You need to hear that. If sensitive to others' jokes, there's something underneath they poke. Until that's fixed. So what is it that's underneath? If, if you were at peace with yourself and you knew who you were and your value and your worth, nothing anybody says to you could get you down, could get you off kilter, could get you upset. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they are bullying you, harassing you, it wouldn't get you off because what they're doing is just also a reflection of them. When I used to be mean and nasty to other people, it's because I was mean and nasty to myself first. So when they are putting you down or pushing at you, they're doing that to themselves. They're doing that to themselves first. And when you can pull yourself back and be like, wow, if they're making fun of me this much, they must be pretty miserable. And then you kind of start to feel sorry for your tormentors. You start to feel bad for them and you realize, you know what? They're probably miserable. They probably don't have a good life right now. Maybe I should pray for them. And there's something about you extending some kindness, you praying for them, even without them knowing, that can change the tide. And it will at least make you feel good about you, no matter what they do. Okay, was that helpful? All right, let me look at some of your other questions. Um, okay, uh, NNP says, you should make a Darman video, uh, Q&A video for anyone who has questions about acting. You know what, that's a good idea. And maybe I'll do that when my new acting course comes out. So many of you guys know that last year and the beginning of this year, I shot a new course to teach people how to become an actor. It's called Acting and Having Fun. And I'm hoping to release it by fall. Hopefully by the end of the year, I will have that ready. And that might be a good time to do a Q&A when that's ready to come out. Nicholas says, it's easy for me to get upset because I'm an emotional person. I understand I used to be. So hopefully this was good information for you and you can start to put it into play. But you don't have to believe anything people say to you or about you. You don't have to believe it, right? I'm an emotional person too. I have to be to be an actor, right? 
All right. Creeper 2019 wants to know why I have two different colored eyes. I was born that way. Uh -huh. Ryan says, do you wish sometimes you could just let go of the world and enjoy? I do. I do now. I let go of all the expectations, all the fear, all the things people want me to do, all the things they want me to be and say, and I just, I can only be me and you guys can only be you and you can't live up to what people want you to be. I shared in my speech this week, um, something I shared in one of my videos, um, people aren't going to understand you. When God called you to be who you are, to do what you're supposed to do, he called you and it wasn't a conference call. He didn't let all the other people around you, even in your own family, know what your calling and purpose was. He told you and wants you to walk it out and wants you to live it. If some people don't understand, how can they? God wasn't speaking to them. He was speaking to you. Right? Okay, let me see some of your other questions. Um, Christina says, my friends... Pretend to be nice to me, but ignoring me. Sometimes no one wants to go with me to drink something. What can I do? I would say get some new friends. Get some new friends. Why would you want to convince people to be your friends or have friends that are ignoring you? That sounds more like frenemies, not friends. I would get some new friends. You know, sometimes, sometimes it can be lonely. Walking out your path and your destiny and your purpose can be lonely. Sometimes you're the only one on the path. But here's what my old pastor, um, Mel Ayers, used to say. What you need to do is run as hard and as fast as you can towards your goals. And then as you're running as fast as you can towards your goals, you look to your left and you look to your right and you see who is running just as hard towards their goals as you are. And those are the people that you want to make friends with, the people who are on a mission, the people who have a purpose. You know, just this morning in my quiet time, I used to be so, I used to do everything was in my power to help everybody, the lowest of the low, the people that have like, and, and I don't say low as in, in going after their goals, low in their expectations, low in having, recognizing their purpose. God told me this morning, I want you to run as fast as you can towards the goals I've given you and look just behind you and see who is running just behind you. The people that are wanting what you want, going after what you're going for, that need that little help up. You know what I was doing before that? I was trying to help the people who can't even get out of bed in the morning. I was trying to help the people who were sitting on the bleachers watching the race. And God said, no more of that. Now you need to start helping the people who are in the race. So my, my goals have shifted of, of my, the clients who I want to help in the future, who I want to coach or who I want in my online course and my different programs that I'm doing, the people that I want to speak to on my YouTube channel aren't those I have to pull out of the mud and spray them off and convince them that they're like that they have a purpose. I want to I want to help the ones who know they have a purpose, but maybe they're a little stuck. They're running towards what they think their purpose is, but maybe things are in their way. They they can't see. Maybe they tripped along the way, but they're at least in the race. Right? They're at least trying. Cuz you can't drag people to success. It's tiring. It will wear you out. Those who are at least on the track that are attempting to run, those are the people that I'm now called to help. Maybe, maybe you have a similar thing. I don't know. Um, okay, that hopefully that was helpful to you. All right, I'm looking at your comments now, Nicola. Thank you for the gift. I appreciate you. Um, let's see. No, I'm not. Christina, I'm not sad that people say bad things about me because they're probably saying bad things about themselves and everybody else. It's none of my concern. My first mentor ever, Marshall Ferguson, first mentor in California, taught me 
pounded into my head that it's none of my business what other people think of me. And I want to share that with you too. It's none of your business what other people think of you. I know you may be going, how can it not be my business? They're talking about me. They're saying this about me. Listen, it is none of your business what other people think of you. It's your business what you think of you and what God thinks of you. And if you're living up to your standards and you're living up to God's standards, let them say what they're going to say, right? A, a little poem I wrote. So let them all speak ill of you. That cannot change God's will for you. So soon they'll have their fill of you when they see what God's going to do. You can't be running towards your goals and then stopping to pick a fight with someone in the bleachers who's hollering at you, right? Imagine this. If you're in professional sports and you're on the football, you're playing football and you're trying to get to that end goal line and you're trying to get the ball there and you're running and the people on the field playing the game with you are trying to tackle you and you've got some yokels, some jokers in the in the bleachers sitting on the benches hollering, you suck, run faster, you can't catch that ball, you're not little. What would happen if he took his eyes off the goal and stopped what he was doing to say, that's not true. I'm good. Look at me. I'm on the field. You're, you're on the bleachers. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. If he was looking there, he would get tackled by the opposing team on the field. You guys cannot be worried or concerned what the jokers on the bleachers are saying who aren't even in the game. This is your life. You got to get in the game of your life and you got to pursue your goals and go towards it till all the wheels fall off till you have no breath left in you. And they can say what they want to say, but they can't stop you unless you stop yourself to listen to their nonsense and their chatter. It's not worth it, guys. They're not the ones paying your bills. They're not the ones you go home to every night. You have to start treating them like a mosquito. The next time some hater or some joker or some yokel sitting on the bleachers tries to tell you something bad about yourself, I want you to think of them like a mosquito or a fly. Just flick them off. You guys are acting like there's some big grizzly bear that's going to eat you. They're not going to eat you. They can't eat you. All they're doing is running your mouth. The problem is you're believing them. I used to believe them too. That's why that's why I wrote this book, right? I had to get over my insecurities. I had to know I was enough, right? And my new book, right? You are worthy. Stop building other people's dreams and sabotaging your own so you can step into your calling and live your purpose with confidence. Are you doing that? Are you living your purpose? Are you doing it with confidence? Are you doing everything other people expect you to do and putting your problems on the back burner. Listen, I did that for over 10 years and I had to draw the line in the sand and say no more. I'm not going to do that anymore. You get one life and you're going to stand before God one day and you're going to give an account to what you did on this earth. And, and do you think your excuse is going to fly if you say, sorry, God, I didn't live my purpose and my calling because these people were calling me names. Really? Do you think that's going to fly? Okay. Sorry if that was a little harsh, but sometimes psh, 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 we all need to be slapped out of our stupor, right? So we can get on the right path. That's a tough love. Sometimes I'm warm and fuzzy and sometimes I have to show tough love. Uh, Donald says, oh, hold on a sec. Oh, yeah. Orly says, life will always be life. We have to continue on with our goals and dreams and not let things get in the way. Things are going to get in the way. Exactly. Newsflash. You can't stop your dreams and goals just because someone does something to try to mess you up. Because then you're letting the devil win. Then you're letting that loser win. Who's, you know what? If you were busy going after your own goals and dreams, you would not have time to worry about what anybody else was doing. You wouldn't have time. Though, you know, those people who are running after their goals and dreams aren't the ones spreading the hate. They're not the ones spreading the hate. I'm looking for something in case you're wondering. <laughs> If, have you guys ever heard the poem, If You Were Busy? The people who are successful in life 
aren't the people tearing you down. It's the people who are not successful, the people who aren't doing anything with their life. Successful people will spur you on to more success. I'm running after my goals. I don't have time to look around and see what anyone. So the people who are running around telling you what you're doing wrong, why you don't measure up, how come you do this? They, seriously? Sorry, if you were, there's a, there's a poem that I love about this that I want to share with you. This is quoting these quotes for you. So the people that are talking negative to you are not even the people you want to look up to. They're not the ones who are achieving the great heights. You will never see, or very, very rarely, like 99% of the time, the people who are successful running after their goals aren't turning back to hear what the little yippy dogs are saying around them. I heard a great, and now is it analogy? Analogy, metaphor. I heard a great analogy the other day, if that's the right word. And it said, people don't pay attention when a dog is barking at the moon. Now, those of you who took my course know I have a lesson in there that talks about how we are like the moon. We are like the moon. We're called to shine bright. What does the moon do? The moon reflects the sun, right? The, the moon doesn't have any light necessarily itself, but it reflects the light from the sun. So if you're reflecting God, the bright and morning star, the you know, you're, you're, you're reflecting God, you're going to shine bright. If a little dog is barking at the moon, people are going to pay attention. If the moon starts yelling back at the dog. You got to remember you're the moon. You don't yell back at the little doggies barking at you. And that's, you know, studios. I just feel like he handled it with such class because the dogs were barking at him and he didn't bark back. A lot of the things they were saying he could have, I mean, he could have said a lot of things back. He could have defended himself. He could, he had for lack of better terms, he had dirt on them. And some of the things they were saying, he was, he's too classy for that. He was being the moon. He wasn't going to bark back at the little dogs. The people who are successful don't have time to be barking back at others. They're just going after their purpose. They're just going after their vision, right? And if you were busy going after yours, you wouldn't have time to worry about them. So I'm going to share this with you. There's a poem by our foreman that says, if you were busy being kind, I love this poem. If you were busy being kind before you knew it, you would find you'd soon forget to think was true that someone was unkind to you, right? You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even, someone being mean and nasty to you, you wouldn't even remember to think about it if you were busy out there being kind. So be busy being kind. So be so busy being kind to others that you don't, you're like, Oh, that's right. Oh, oh, that person did say something that, oh, well, they said something nasty. See, you're turning your focus to the wrong thing. You're turning your focus to what the little yipping dogs are saying. You can't be busy doing that. Be busy being kind. Second stanza. If you were busy being glad and cheering people who seem sad, although your heart might ache a bit, you'd soon forget to notice it. So what are you, are you busy being glad? Are you busy bringing joy to others? Are you busy cheering up people who were sad? Yeah, maybe, maybe there's some times where it feels like, oh, I'm, I, there's nobody cheering me, but you get this juice, you get this aliveness. I remember times where I was down and depressed and I called someone else or they called me and I, they were down in a deep pit and I helped pull them out of their for them, cheering them up out of their sadness. So your heart might ache a bit, but you'd soon forget to notice it. When you're down and depressed, you can help pull someone else out of their depression. Don't stay stuck down in that place. Be busy cheering them up. Here's this one. If you were busy being good and doing just the best you could, you'd not have time to blame some man who's doing just the best he can. How many of... The people who were out there accusing people of not being, you're not doing enough. You're, do, you're doing, you should do this. You should not do that. They're blaming. They're pointing fingers. They're saying, you're not this. You're not that. You need to be this. If you were busy being good and doing just the best you could, 
you'd not have time to blame some man, maybe man with two ends, who's doing just the best he can. Blame everyone else around you. I think my video coming out on next Saturday is about blame. So you'll, it'll be perfect timing. I'm going to say that one again. If you were busy being good and doing just the best you could, you'd not have time to blame some man who's doing just the best he can. Are you in that phase where you're blaming people? Are you blaming people for how your life is or why things didn't work out? Stop blaming people. Start doing good. If you were busy being true to what you knew you ought to do, hello, why are you looking around at what everyone else is doing? If you were busy being true to what you knew you ought to do, you'd be so busy that you'd forget the blunders of folks you've met. When you're busy running after your purpose and your calling, you're not looking around to see how's this person messing up? How's that person messing up? What are they doing wrong? Ain't nobody got time for that, right? So run after being true to what you know you ought to do. What are you supposed to be doing right now? If you are if you have dreams and goals, you know there's probably 600 things right now that you should be doing towards those dreams and goals. You do not have time to step out of your goals and dreams, get your magnifying glass out and look to see, oh, that person isn't doing that right. Oh, that person shouldn't be doing that. You don't have time for that. Last stanza. Last stanza. Then we'll talk. If you were busy being right, you'd find yourself too busy quite to criticize your brother long because he's busy being wrong. Are you going around pointing out to everyone where they're wrong, where they don't measure up, what they should be doing better? That is none of your dang business. I got heated up, didn't I? I got heated up this last portion. <laughs> We don't have time to point out other people's flaws. We got our own flaws. We got our own issues to work on, right? <sighs> you can tell this, this topic heats me up. It's not, do not listen to what other people say and don't be busy trying to find fault in other people. Run your own race, live your own life. Um, somebody's saying, <laughs> Somebody's saying, bring Timmy back on. Oh, I'm right here. The dog <laughs> is, the dog's on my oh, lap. He, he can't move because the dog is sitting on his lap. <laughs> um, yes, okay, Nicholas saying she's going to share the confidence chapter in the You Are Worthy book with her followers. Okay, Rebecca saying, Catherine, what are examples of people being on track in your eyes? Not every day is perfect, so I'm trying to understand here. Okay, so you've got goals and dreams, right? Do you know, are you working every day towards those goals and dreams? Sometimes that means you're doing certain tasks. You're calling people, you're emailing people, you're researching things, you're, you're strengthening yourself. If you're, you know, trying to go for the Olympics, you're trying to get stronger, you're trying to do things towards your goals, your dreams, your visions, working towards it every day. If you don't know what to do, you're taking time to pray. Maybe you're taking time to fast and pray. Maybe you're making a list. Maybe you're trying to find someone to work with you. But every day you're focused on you, your goals, your dreams, and your visions. By not on track, that means you're not even in the race. That's you sitting on the bleachers. That's you sitting on the benches, looking at the people in the race going... I wish I was in that race. I wish I was going after my dreams. I wish I could go after my vision. I wish I could do the things I want. Look at all those people doing their... No. Get on the track. Get on track by getting on the track. And once you're on the track, figure out what is it that you need to do. Go, today, after this live stream, make a list. Make a list of all your dreams. Make a list of what you feel is the biggest dream. Make a list of all the things that go with it. What are the to-dos that you need to do? do? If you want to be an actor, do you need to take voice lessons? Do you need to take acting classes? Do you need to practice? Do you need to read plays? Do you need to record yourself filming? Do you need to get headshots? Do you need to get on the casting sites and start going hey guys, to auditions? Um, nugget, nugget, please go. Hey guys, I know you can't see me right now, but <clears throat> bend down. This is the camera. They say they can see us. We can't see ourselves. 
Oh yeah, um, guys, I have some bad news. Um, the doggy broke the boys, and I think boys is in surgery right now with doggy Clifford. Okay, so the dog tore apart his favorite plushie, Boris. He's in the surgery room. Right and now. he's in the surgery room right now. Okay, so we'll all pray he makes it through the surgery. Okay. Uh, Ananda said, thank you, Catherine, for helping me out. Uh, Allie says, I love this so much. Tough love. <laughs> okay, let's see. Donald says, if you worry about what your family and friends say, you're losing sight of your meaning and your goals and your passion. Yeah, my parents didn't want me to move to L.A. and be an actor. They loved me, but they were scared for me. They didn't want me to get hurt. They didn't want me to fall into a bad crowd. They didn't want me to do things that were that could mess me up, right? Um, Via says, why do some people go after the people who do not want to be friends with them and push away the ones that want to be friends with them? My goodness, that could be a whole nother discussion. Um is that okay if you ask me that next week and we table that for today? Whenever, it was, whenever Danny had mom. Yeah. Well, they can ask me again. Uh, I'm not going to put myself in charge of remembering. I'm going to put you in charge of remembering. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm scrolling through your... Okay. I'm scrolling through your questions. Oh, did I just... Did some of them just jump? Okay, you may need to type them in again if you had a question that I didn't get. Oh, Christina writes, no, Boris. Oh, yeah. Okay, Brian says, I have a problem with people when I'm working at the store with my manager. People look at me like I'm the problem, and they look at me a lot and give me mad faces, and they bring me in a bad mood. Okay, Brian, doesn't matter how people look at you. Don't read into it. Don't make up stories about it. Don't make it mean anything about you. If they want to give you ugly faces, let them give you ugly faces. You do your best. You do your best to be kind. You, you do your best to do your job the best to the best of your ability. And don't worry about anybody's faces. You know, sometimes we misread the faces anyway. Sometimes we think, oh, they don't like me or they're making this face because there's disapproval. Yes, sometimes that's true. But they may be making a bad face because they got a rock in their shoe. They be make, may be making a, a mad face because they got a wedgie. You don't know. They be making a mad face because they just got a nasty text from someone. Maybe they just read one of their, somebody commented on their social media some by some hater, and they just read it, and that's their mad face. We don't know why people are making mad faces. And so... I would say don't let it get you in a bad mood. You have you may not have control over how people look at you, but you have control over how you respond, how you react. Scripture tells us love believes the best. Why not believe the best? Why not believe, you know, and try this tactic. If they are giving you bad, mad, angry face, try more, out. More like this. <laughs> yeah, like that. You got to do it closer to the camera. <laughs> yeah, bad face. Why not go up to them instead of making it put you in a bad mood and say, hey, are you OK? You know, it seems like maybe maybe you're frustrated about something or angry about something. Is is there anything I can do to help? Or, you know, is there can I pray for you? It seems like maybe something's not going right with you today. Let me tell you, they will turn into a shape shifter. They may be blaming you for something or they may be mad about something and they and, and they and they may confront you. They may say, well, I don't like that you did this. And you can say, you know what? I'm really sorry. I didn't I didn't realize I did that. Maybe you cut them off or maybe you did something that they're reading the wrong way. But things can be solved through conversation. Things can be solved through conversation. So why don't you try to figure out what's going wrong with them instead of making it about you? Even if they are giving you mad faces, don't put yourself in a bad mood just because they're showing angry faces. Find out what's going wrong with them. Have some care and concern about them and not just yourself, right? When I was had low self-esteem, I didn't realize I was being selfish. I talk about this in the advanced course. Guys, I'm finally... You guys have been hearing me say this for like a year and a half. I'm finally starting to edit the advanced course. In there, I talk about selfishness and 
one of the things about being selfish that a lot of people don't recognize is that being self-consumed with our thoughts and our being oh, egotistical. Oh, and by the way, I want to give you y'all a goal. You gotta buy the paint sorry. You gotta buy the Euro movie phone case. You gotta buy the Euro movie online course. You gotta buy the Euro movie book. That's your goal, okay? Timmy's saying your goal is to buy the You Are Worthy phone case, the You Are Worthy course, and the You Are Worthy book. <laughs> oh, and the advanced course. I forgot about that. And the advanced course. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I thought it was for the Divine Solution. No, the Divine Solution is a bonus course I threw in for course number one. Whoops. I'm going to create another bonus course to go with the advanced course. Cool. So they get an extra. Of course, it's going to be like a follow-up. Like a follow-up, yeah. yeah. Um, so... Is this helpful? Has this been helpful to you guys? Um, are you starting to see things a different way? We can't be blaming others and we can't allow what <clears throat> others say to us, get us off kilter, get us upset. It's just projection. They're just projecting onto you the way they feel about themselves. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything about you. It really doesn't. They're having their own oh, issues wait, someone, and they're trying to... Do. They're having their own issues and they're trying to yes, take it so, out on you. Yes, some of the advertisement. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you are worthy. You're worthy of your dreams. You're worthy of your goals. You're worthy of going after them. And here's the great, great news. You are in control of your destiny. You are in control of your thoughts. You are in control over your emotions. So you can't say, they put me in a bad mood. Right, Brian? Any of us. They hurt me. They can only hurt you or put you in a bad mood to the extent that you is a choice. Hurt is a choice. Um, I mean, yourself out of it. <clears throat> yourself out of it and live the life you want to live. Go for your dreams the way you want to go for them and be happy. I used to work in a factory on an assembly line and everyone was miserable. Everyone was always in a bad mood. Yeah. And I would come in and they Whoa. would. Listen, I'm talking. No, no, no I was talking once. Somebody, if somebody mentions that silly robot movie. Put your head in so they can see oh, sorry, you. Sorry, sorry. If somebody mentions that silly robot movie, Megan, I am going to find that person and shoot them with a handgun. Okay. No, you're not. Please, just stop talking about horror movies. I'm going to make my horror movie someday. It's going to be called Killer Boys. It's going to simply say there was a Super Bowl. By the way, just check out that movie, Super Bowls. Thank God. Okay, Timmy. But yeah, we're watching my own horror movie. I think it's going to release this Sunday, but I don't know. Timmy doesn't watch horror movies, but he sometimes makes them on his YouTube channel, but they're not really horror movies. He thinks do, they do, are. Do, do they're like, more like thrillers. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, they're not really horror movies. We, we don't let Timmy watch horror movies. We don't watch horror movies. So be you and feel who you are. I was going to I was going to work on that assembly line with joy. And it made people mad that I had joy. I would come in happy and smiling and they'd be all, all grumpy at me. Do it. Feel the way you want to feel. Don't let don't let the people around you determine how you feel. You be the thermostat, right? You set your own temperature. Don't walk into places like a thermometer. A thermometer goes into places, checks the temperature. Oh, we at 70 degrees today. Okay, we're 70. We're all going to be sad because we're all sad today. Oh, we're at 100 degrees today. Oh, we're going to be, we're all mad today. Oh, I'm going to join in and be mad. Now you be the thermostat. When you, when people come around you, when you, excuse me. When you go to, a, you go into a room and you see that it's 100 you're going to adjust yourself back down to a comfortable temperature. When you see it's down here, you're going to heat it back up to a, to a temperature that's comfortable for you. You do you. Okay, guys. Love you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Live true, love hard, shine bright. Bye.